Well, on that story, let's cross now to our guest, Professor of History Ian Rafowitz, who joins us from New York. Hello, thank you very much for being with us, sir. Um, how do you explain Donald Trump's response? Donald Trump's response makes clear one thing, that he is exactly the same person who ran for president, openly courting the support of white supremacists. I don't think we can deny that. Uh, I think his reaction yesterday reconfirmed that. The only appropriate reaction from a president of the United States after an event like yesterday would have been to say this. I saw the people yesterday wearing hats with my presidential slogan. I saw them chanting my name. Not only do I denounce them, I don't want their support and I don't want their vote. Something along those lines that was tr would be truly full, a full-throated rejection of, of not only what they stand for, but their support of him might have, might have gone some way to making people in this country feel a little bit more safe, feel a little bit more that their president w rejects this kind of hate. He did not do that, which demonstrates he is not willing to cut his uh, courting, his ties, his uh, uh, acceptance of the support of these uh, truly extremist white supremacists who have, have shown their, their willingness to be violent. And he, he, he just won't cut his ties to them. Does it make any strategic sense if we're being cynical? I mean, he is in power now. Does he really need to keep them on side by refusing to condemn them explicitly? You know, that's a great question. Uh, I've learned over the last two years to um, try not to think uh, that I can get into the mind of Donald Trump in terms of strategy, uh, because uh, it's, it's really impossible. Uh, I think he's largely operating on his own uh, understanding of, of strategy. In his mind, he measures success in one way victory. He won the White House for, you know, whatever you want to say about him, he won the White House in a certain way. So in his mind, why would he change? Victory led him, uh, you know, support, getting support from these, these extremists gave, brought him to victory. And so he's not going to, to alter that path until, uh, until he's defeated, in, in which case, you know, it's a different story, obviously. And who are these far-right groups? Who are the people taking part in these demonstrations? We're talking about people who come under a broad array of, 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 an, um, of an extremist umbrella. Uh, they are people who are committed to preserving white identity. Uh, they have organized themselves over the, over the years. Um, are they exactly the same as the old-fashioned Ku Klux Klan? No, but there are ties between them. Uh, David Duke, who really is a, in some ways a figure of the past, has emerged as one of the people talking most explicitly about the connections to Donald Trump. Um, but you have people like Richard Spencer, who is a, a, a leader, so to speak, of this white nationalist movement. You have other people as well. Uh, I would urge, for more information than I can go into here, an article written uh, by Sarah Posner and uh, David Nywert in Mother Jones called How Trump Took Hate Groups Mainstream. It has a lot of detail about who these people are and how Donald Trump really has been openly courting them by retweeting uh, uh, hashtags like white genocide, which are so far out the, of the mainstream, yet are being retweeted by a president of the United States. Ian Rafowitz, thank you very much for having spoken to us. Thank you.